Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here, bringing you a quick fixture update video. Step one, mount Mighty Bite Back Magic. I've had this thing for a long time, five years, something like that. Used to have it on the Tormac machine. Um, finally filled up this cavernous empty space on the Mori. Very happy with that. We've got it set up with the vacuum pallet, vacuum gauge, vacuum line. There's a regulator in here. Um, and what we're doing with that is we're holding down foam because we used to have these made out of house and now we are making our own in house. Very excited with this. The red that we bought turned out kind of pinkish. Not quite sure how I feel about it yet. Um, I was hoping for a darker red, but it looks cool anyway. I just made this yesterday. Pretty darn happy with how everything's fitting. Um, the knife doesn't quite fit because I forgot to include the flipper tab or the blade section right there. So version two is gonna be awesome. But from one sheet, I can fit six of these guys nested together on the, uh, on the vacuum plate. Pearson packaging game is completely on point. They got the labeled tape. They got t-shirts in the, you know, not vacuum seal plastic, but nice plastic. Maybe a little uh, waste of plastic, because I feel bad throwing it away, but it is nice packaging. Look at this. Individually segmented to get a perfect fit. I love it. This thing is gorgeous. Let's take a closer look. So Jay, P Jay Pearson from Pearson Work Holding, has come out with a mini version of his standard uh, speed change pallet system, which normally has two of his ball locks and the mini version that he just came out with, typically designed for Tormac machines. He said he was uh, super inspired by going to the John Saunders open house where I saw him a few months ago. So he wanted to make a mini version um, and the mini version works perfect for me because now I have to happen to have this spot in the back of the machine where this will fit like a glove. And I am a fixturing nerd. Um, absolutely love making fixtures. They're always complicated and they're always awesome. Um, it'll be very interesting finding the differences between using an orange palette versus using um, the speed change palette system. And I actually have a lot of faith in how this turns out. Um, the details on this thing are basically Grimsmo quality. I absolutely love it. The tool paths going around the outside, genius touch. He's got hardened work surfaces here, which made to um, machine surfaces here. Uh, what are they called? Dowel pin liners here, fixture pins. Uh, this his coupler thingy that goes on here. Now this thing is cool because I used to use, on the Tormac, I used to use the vacuum plate as a fixture device because it's got the pins and everything. And uh, it just eats up air like crazy. So it's kind of annoying to use because it's constantly running a compressor. And if you have a regular piston style compressor, it's just gonna be running nonstop in your small shop. Now we have a bigger shop with the, uh, the screw compressor over there, a little bit less of an issue, but still like, the cool thing with this is there's a spring in here that's shoving the balls outward. So as you apply air, it deforms the, not deforms, but desprings the balls so that your pallet can go on. And then you remove air and the balls, the spring holds the whole thing down. Um, he's got a little valve, valve kit here. So it's super easy to change things out. He even makes the bed clamps with some sweet machine tool paths on it. I'm a sucker for tool paths. They make their own um, <clears throat> hardened pins here. I love the logo. I love everything, you know, the, the detail around it. Even both sides of this has a chamfer. This is made out of one solid piece of aluminum. The hardened steel, stainless steel? Th steel, plates, I don't know, are uh, screwed in from the bottom. Love it. Love the contrasting tool paths on the bottom. They did a nice slow facing pass for the main surface and then for the kind of lightweight pockets, whatever reason he had for um, putting those in, just goes faster. And uh, it turns out like really cool mashup of difference. I like how the um, fixture pins are nutted in from the bottom basically. Um, just very, very secure setup. 
and the pallet, I can't put the pallet on right now without air applying to it, but this is the 8x14 pallet, I believe, which calculates out to 116 square inches. The Orange Vice 6x20 inch pallet is 120 square inches of surface. So these two pallets are almost identical in size due to one being wider than the other, which I find very, very awesome. Now the orange works really well for me because I have 20 inches of Y, or just over 20 inches, so I can put them like this, whereas this pallet, I'm going to end up putting it sideways as my mill goes to sleep. So I'm going to basically be putting it right there. So I can still use my vacuum pallet. Those pallets come off super easy. It's going to be a nice workflow of all kinds of stuff. So right now I've got the orange vise as a vise setup. I typically use this a lot with the combo jaws. I've got a full pallet here. I can easily put two full pallets on either side. I just haven't made more pallets. I have more blanks up on the wall. Um, so I have that. I have the foam, the vacuum pallet here to do the foam. I have the Pearson pallets. I don't exactly know what I'm going to put on them yet, but I have a lot of products coming up um, that I will need fixture plates for. So I'm super excited for that. So. Overall, very excited to um, get all this stuff mounted up. Um, the foam we're making is turning out really well. Just things are really, really coming together. It's nice to be able to utilize the machine more. I did a night run last night on these Timascus handles. And uh, I, I can just imagine a point in time not too far away where I have a full pallet here, a full pallet there. That's running a completely different product and maybe Maybe I don't have anything here because we're probably just going to dedicate this to foam right now. Um, and foam is a dry process. But there's utilization, you know, infinite different ways to do things. And I, I've got, I know I have a long ways to go to actually maximize the use of this machine. But I feel like I'm, I'm inching my way closer um, every day. So that's cool. And with the Nakamura, I just ran... Um, I've been running it for probably 24 hours, not straight, but all day yesterday here at work and all night, baking a full bar of bearings. It made an absolute mess down here. Um, it's been a, a tricky, tricky scenario getting it to make these bearings because they're so small, they're so thin, they're so delicate that when the subspindle grabs onto them, uh, they pop out and the ejector pin is spring-loaded. So that pops it out. So the, the pressure on there, like this is the subspindle pressure gauge and it's at zero. It has just enough force. If I hit the pedal, just enough force to extend this ring and compress the call. It, it's a little slow now because it doesn't run this morning yet. Just enough. Um, having some bunch of chip wrap problems, a bunch of you know, I installed an air blast on the main spindle to blow the chips away so that they don't wrap around some of the tools. I've got a little, little internal threading tool here that goes on the inside of the bore and bores this out to the right diameter on the inside. And then I even have the uh, spindle probe, the turret probe, come in. Every 10 parts, it goes into that bored hole, probes it for diameter, um, on both sides, plus and minus, and it can offset any thermal growth um, to keep everything in line through a very long, long run. So I had this thing running, let's see, this resets every day. It's been on for 10 hours today and it's running for seven of that. And that reset, I don't know when that reset, but pretty happy with uh, just everything. Everything's really coming together. Now we have enough bearings to um, last us for 200 knives, which should be really good. Should last us a little while. I've never had so many bearings in one spot, and now I finally got it dialed down. I started writing a process sheet for all the setup for the bearings, so the next time I can go in and not forget everything. Um, bit by bit, we're just getting closer and closer. Then, you know, we're never gonna reach the end, because there is no end. It's always a constant improvement. Um, another thing, thanks to Jay Pearson, that. I should do a video just about this because it's fantastic. I, I literally copied what he did when John Saunders went to his shop and uh, filmed. So I'll give you a quick super rundown, but I want to do a more detailed look later. 
but basically the assembly board, I don't have this super well laid out yet. Um, the manufacturing status board, these are every single component that we make and every process of the way that it, it is at right now. And then the um, production board, this is every machine, every station, you know, the assembly, the grinder, the anodizing, and we're just starting to move into it. Um, so like yesterday was Monday, yeah. I did rasp Tamascus handles, I did foam at the end of the day. Today I've got to make a black Tamascus handle and I'm making bearings on the lathe so now that that's done, I can go, etc. So bearing cages, white dot means it's critical. I was turning it yesterday, but now we're in stock. Check that out. And now I don't need the white pin anymore because we are in stock. And I actually made these pins of course, I put the Grimsmo logo onto it. I glued in uh, some quarter inch neodymium magnets. And fun fact, they're not as strong as I thought they were gonna be. They're quarter inch by one tenth of an inch thick, 0.1 inch, and they're, they're strong enough for this, but they're not as strong as I was expecting. Um, so super quick, this has totally reduced so many headaches because all this information was in my head before and now it is on a piece of paper. Got it hooked up. Pardon the noise. Nakamura's running that live tool. Transfer. It gets very tight in there. Check this parting blade come in. Anyway. Check this out. So I got super easy to hook up. Um, he, he includes this uh, vacuum control unit, some extra fittings, and it's as simple as pulling this up. So in the down position, it is spring-loaded. The spring inside goes up and forces these balls out. In the up position, these are now all loose. So now the pallet can go right on there very easily. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Probably not. seems to work. One thing I thought was really cool, I have way too much stuff on this table. <laughs> Is how So he's got the hardened pads here that the pallet sits on. Decent sized air gap in between. Now, that is going to allow coolant and stuff and chips and stuff to go underneath there. His bigger system, um, pictured right there, has a seal around the outside to prevent schmutz and stuff from getting in there. This is the cheaper version, kind of the entry level thing. It's basically half the price of that other one, um, so I totally get it. Yeah, it's a two-hand thing. It doesn't come up crookedly, which is fine. Um, the cool thing with this is that all you need to do is blow off the pads, the pins, and maybe around here when you're installing a new pallet. The, it doesn't matter if there's like oil and coolant and stuff everywhere else. It's kind of like simplified. Just the contact surfaces need to be clean. Kind of like that. I really like when I get a product and it feels like they thought of everything. Even the little things like the down position is the normal running position. Uh, meaning that it won't get accidentally knocked down or gravity won't make, like, if it's down, it's running. So that's really cool. All the little fittings, comes with hose, comes with super good instructions, everything is packaged nicely, comes with even a super simple mounting bracket. So you can mount this right beside the pallet, like a lot of really, really good stuff. I love the two logos. He 
you know? I love it. It's awesome. So I've got the vac magic with this gigantic fixture plate here. So you can use the vac as a vacuum, which the grid pattern is for, or a fixture plate, which I might use this gigantic piece because I've got two of these big fixtures that have been sitting here for two years unused. Um, so I can either suction it down or I can put four bolt holes into the threaded spots. And then I, I'm not eating up air, it's bolted down. So I might use that for making some of our uh, spinners or other products. And then I can use both. So and then the Pearson system is back here. Um, the problem I'm having, the cool thing about the orange vices is they're like three inches tall plus the two inch fixture. And the Z of this machine does not go all the way down. And most, most big machines are like that. And apparently the brother machines are even worse. Um, it's your tool tip to table or spindle to table or whatever distance. So this is as far down as I can go. I cannot take the tool. Let me jog up and down and see here. It just stalls out. Like it, it doesn't go any more than that. So this is the shortest tool that I that I commonly use, and I use this thing for everything. Um, and I can't even touch the fixture. Some of my tools are longer, I could buy longer holders, but I don't wanna do that. So I need to figure out a way to space up everything, um, at least an inch high, because if I wanna be able to touch the surface of this, I need a good inch. Um, so I might end up making, not today, but um, a subplate to go underneath the vac magic and underneath the Pearson palette to lift them both up, maybe an inch, inch and a half tall, should give me plenty of room to do everything I want to do. Um, and then I think that's what I got to do. So basically a pallet like this, but that goes underneath here, bolts directly to the table and then the, the pallet systems can bolt on top of that. Um, I'm thinking similar to the way that John Saunders is making his um, subplates, his fixture plates for the Tormax. He's getting making them out of aluminum, getting them anodized. I might, he's going to tell me not to, um, but I might make a simple, doesn't have to be huge, just big enough for the Vac Magic, and then one just big enough for the um, Pearson system, and make them out of aluminum, fairly simple, try to keep them flat, machine them in place to deck the surface, and then send them out to get anodized, and they should be pretty good. So that's it for now, guys. Just wanted to give you a quick update on some of the things, like this is just what came up today, basically. Um, we're always working on so much cool stuff. We're having a blast. We're getting faster with everything. I feel like just getting better every day which is really fun um, and I wish I had more time to make more videos and like document all the cool stuff that we're doing because there's a lot um, yeah just know we're having a blast and um, I'll try to take you guys along as much as I can all right have a great day bye